I can't remember, I posted some stuff on Facebook about some vinyl plank transitions that I had made here in my studio and a lot of people was asking about them. So I thought I would just make a quick video here and show you guys how to do it and stuff like that. So a lot of, a lot of steps here in the South, they are made with a two by 12 tread and most of them will have a bullnose on them. Anytime you have a bullnose on steps, for most applications of stair nosings, you're gonna to have to either build that step out. Let me show you right up here what I'm talking about. So you're either gonna to have to uh, build your step out right here. I'll just show you on these right here. So this, this is not a two by 12, it's rounded, but this is what I'm talking about. You need to actually build out this void right here so that it goes straight down just like this frame and square does here in order to apply your stair nosings that the manufacturers recommend and so forth. So uh, rather than building this out or sawing this off right here flush with the riser, um, it's time consuming, building it out costs money for materials and stuff like that. So come up with a little solution that you can make these out of your own vinyl plank flooring that you've got to do the job with so you don't have to worry about any extra work as far as uh, building this out, sawing off this or anything like that. And it's really simple to make, okay? So I just wanted to show you guys uh, here in this video how to do it. Happy Sunday, Ruben from Flooring. Thank you, buddy. So this is it. And I've actually even done it with a couple pieces together uh, just to see if it was possible. I've got a seam actually in my stair nosing here. Um, we're gonna say like this right here, is the two by 12 um, landing. And you can see this right here, I've actually made this just the size. Let me turn this around here. I've made that, made my space right here just the size of a two by four. So it will actually set right over it perfectly like that and fit real nice and snug. You don't have any play or anything like that. So if you apply your adhesive uh, here and on the tread, just like you normally would, that's going to fit on there and it's going to be really nice and solid. And also a benefit to this is you're not destroying anything here on your tongue or your groove, whichever way you want to do it, it don't really matter. I still have my locking mechanism here. So if this is a, just get some scraps here, but if this is my tread right here, I can just lock my next piece right into it like so right there and it's going to go seamlessly right here it ain't going to have any void or anything perfectly flush and all that stuff so it don't destroy anything it allows you to keep installing just like you would on a regular floor because you still have your tongue and groove system okay uh, i've also done it with a piece of vinyl plank that is for so I would use this right here in a waterfall situation, which if you have a waterfall situation, you could just use the manufacturer's uh, stair nozings for it, but they're always plastic or aluminum or something like that. This is made out of the very same vinyl plank as your flooring is. And again, you can lock your lock your tread right onto it. And also in this application, you can even take and lock, let me get this piece here too. Uh, for this bend the riser, this is the tread. You can actually take and lock your tread right on there too. Let me just cut a piece of this right quick so you can get a kind of an idea what that's going to look like. Let's see. <coughs> that way it's a little bit better for same size and such, okay? So you can take lock in here on the tread and also lock in right there on the riser and have a seamless step. Everything's gonna to go together just like it normally would if you was installing on the floor, okay? So this is great. You don't have any hollow voids. I'm gonna point this out right here. You don't have any hollow voids or anything. The thickness here in the bend is actually the same thickness of your flooring and everything like that. And it's the same. Same with these as well, okay? You're not, you're not taking out any, any product. You keep it all the same thickness, so it's gonna have all the same durability and such like that, okay? So they're gonna hold up 
excellent, okay? Just like the flooring would, okay? Uh, there's so many reasons why a person could do this. Um, I've, I've done this just a while ago just to show that it could uh, be made and cut for actually wrapping steps. Let's go over here and I'll put this on the step and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So this would go on the corner of a step right here. See how I got that made there? And then I just cut my 45 on it to make it fit right on the corner of a step there, okay? It's not the cleanest cut. My saw's got a dull blade and I wasn't, wasn't trying to change it and everything just to do this. I'm sure you guys can get the point, but for an outside corner on the steps like that, I have this made, cha-ta. So you could have it on the front and also on the side of it. Obviously, again, it's made for a two by 12 riser, so definitely got slack in there. You wouldn't have to, you wouldn't have, to have it fit snug here, because it's gonna cover and it touches all the way here. You make it to fit your depth of the step. You're gonna custom make these to fit all your steps. So if one sticks out a little bit further than the other, which it does quite often, so you say you might have an inch and a half on this one, your next one might be an inch and three quarters or something. So you can actually take your step Take your vinyl plank and make them fit precisely to each single step and have a nice good fit on that, okay? Um, here's another reason why you might want something like that. So this, uh, if you have a single step or something, a guy actually just sent me a picture of this a while ago and I thought, cool, I'll just, I'll point that out too. So uh, maybe on a single step or something going up into the regular house, on a garage conversion or something like that where you've converted your garage into a living space or a den or something like that a lot of times they will have a single step looking here so this is going to be a tread that needs to wrap around the corner again I just did it small just to give you the point so this will wrap right around the corner I made it fit that one because I had that sitting up there but with this with this been done like this, it can look really nice because you can keep your same grain pattern going right around it. Don't actually cut off and start a new piece there or you have some funky little corner piece covering it up or anything like that. So this is just a great idea how to manipulate your pieces like this to make them do exactly what you want to, okay? It's not hardwood, it is vinyl. So it, you can pretty much do anything you want to with it. I've done other videos talking about peeling the skin off of it and vinyl tile, vinyl plank is so versatile. A person can pretty much do whatever they want to do with it, okay? You just have to use your brain a little bit, think about stuff. What, what, what situation are you in on the job? How can I manipulate this vinyl to get this covered up? There's always a way. Most of the time there's going to be a way, like I said, because vinyl plank Vinyl plank is so uh, versatile, okay? So, I'm gonna show you what I got here. I've got a, how to do this real fast. It won't take too long. I'm gonna use my router, and right here I've got a half inch, half inch V Groover bit. I'm gonna put in my router, and I'm gonna take it out, take the excess out, the thing about this is, I'm going to do a bull nose step because there is a little bit that you have to know to make this size here fit over your over your uh, over your nosing perfect over your two by twelve. So I want to adjust this up to where it barely. I'm going to do another small piece. This is demonstration purposes only. Okay. So you want to adjust your router down to where it only goes through the backing and not the wear layer. Looky here, let's see here. I got a pin somewhere here. So whenever I set my router, I want it to cut through the backing and stop right when it gets to the actual vinyl wear layer, okay? I wanna keep this whole. I don't wanna cut into this whatsoever, okay? This stuff has no memory, okay? So once you bend it and let it cool in position, you're never gonna, it's never gonna want to bend back out to its flat form. It don't have any memory to it, okay? So you're good to go. However, in uh, these situations, I'm like a little bit impatient. I don't wanna sit and wait on to cool, so I do put a little super glue there just to make it get a good bite and 
I don't have to wait on it to cool. But anyway, I'm going to set my depth again just where it don't cut through the whole plank. I want only to cut through the backing. So let's see, maybe a little bit more. Right about there. Get that set just perfect. That's kind of important right there. You, you want to take out enough, but not too much. Okay, I think I'm going to be good with that. I'm going to lock it down, okay? Now, I want to get me a few marks on this. I've got me just a little dummy board here. This is the size of a 2x4, two 2x12, two or whatever that you're going to be using. And most of them are an inch and a half. Most of the risers underneath the overhang is going to be an inch and a half or something like that. So I'm just going to go with that. I'm going to say an inch and a half. Now, again, I'm just doing this to show you guys how to do it, okay? So I'm going to get my mark there, the thickness of the plank, and a mark right there. And then this is going to be the underneath part right here. Now I'm going to work on this part right here, okay? I'm going to take the thickness of this again, right there, put it right dead on my line. Let me turn it this way so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to place the side right on my line there, and I'm going to get me another mark right there, the thickness of the thickness of the 2x12, or your riser, however you want to say it, or the tread, I mean. Again, I'm getting it on my line, get me another mark right there. And uh, I got me a couple clamps and a nice straight board there. That way I can make my cut right across here nice and straight. And uh, I'm ensuring a nice, clean, straight, not crooked or anything like that. This is going to be a nice, crispy, clean, square bend because I'm going to line this board up, run my router right against that, okay? So the thing that you want to do, now this is really important here. If you take the V of this, the very point of this router, if you take this right here, right down your mark, and then you take it right down your mark here, you're going to be off, okay? You actually want to use the side of this router bit on this side of your mark, and when you get down here and you want to cut this one, you want to use the same side, it don't have to be, well, I don't know about the same side, but anyway, you want to use the side on this side of it, okay? So you want this, you want your actual V cut to be somewhere right in there and then somewhere right in there. That way the side of your router is on these marks, on the outside of these marks, okay? Because this is the perfect distance for that to wrap right over there, okay? So if you cut here and you cut here, you're gonna be a, you're gonna be about a quarter inch or maybe even a half inch quarter inch, I guess, too short, too tight to fit over, okay? So you gotta leave all of this material here to here. You gotta leave all that because that fits in perfect, okay? So that's the only thing that you really need to watch. I'm gonna go ahead now, uh, because I do need to do that, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna take, get my board right here, right where I need it, on the edge, I'm looking through my little router hole here let's see here oh i'm actually going to take and mark this line straight down so i can see it right there same thing here that way i can adjust set my blade exactly where i want it okay i'm gonna do the same thing on both pieces both ends rather because i'm going to set this according to both sides okay Now again, I want the side of my router bit, the fattest part of my router bit should be right dead on that mark. Um, after I get this marked, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Right there, and I want to get a mark right here. And I'll do the other side since I'm right here. show you exactly what I'm talking about here in just a second. I'll be 
way to simplify this here, but I just started messing with this stuff yesterday or the day before, I can't quite remember. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about right here. We'll get a good look at this board right here at my marks. So I want the flat edge of my router to be right on the side of that mark, okay? On that one and uh, on the other side right here, I want it to be on the opposite side, okay? That way I'm keeping the complete width of this piece right here because that's gonna fit in my two by 12, okay? So the widest sides right there and right there, okay? Now that I got my mark, here, here, I'm gonna stick this board right on it. I'm gonna come over on this side so you can see this. I'm gonna clamp my board right down on these marks here so I can run my router right dead against this. I hope this is this is okay doing this live. It's sure a lot easier to do this like this rather than it is to uh, record it and edit it and everything like that. And you guys have to just see every little bit of it versus editing out the other parts of it, but I hope that's okay. Peter Blue says hi. How's it going, buddy? Hope to see you at some more conventions. Blue says, hoping to get certified this month. Awesome. Good luck on that, buddy. I'm sure you can do it. You going for carpet? I guess. I think that's what you did mostly of. I'm talking to you at the last convention. Carpet. Alright. I'm sure you won't have any issue, buddy. All right, so I got this board locked down on both of my marks right there. I want to be good to now go ahead and router out both uh, router out my first run here. I had to think about that for a second because I got confused on my extra mark, but that's the other one, okay? Anyway, you want to cut this out real fast? Right here, how, how how much I stopped just before the backing, the actual wear layer and stuff like that. Just cut to that, okay? That's exactly what you want right there. All right, I'm gonna readjust my board and get it on the other mark now. Again, I'm just doing this on small pieces just so that you can get the idea. I'm sure that you guys can make you up a little jig or something. Kind of like I got here to do your own thing. I did make this big enough to do full size steps. This jig I got right here is four foot long, which is going to get like 99% of all your steps. So, again, I'm on dead on mark there. I'm going to scoot this over just a hair. Because I was actually covered up just a bit on the first one. So I'm going to get right in the same spot on both of these. That way I don't mess up trying to show somebody how to do it. That would be funny. 
Okay. Again, this is just something like a fence to run my router right against so that I assure I get nice and straight, okay? Did you measure the tread for thickness? That was Peter asking that. He missed the first part. Uh, yes, it is the thickness of a 2x12. That's what we're going by because that's what most of them are here in the south. So I actually used that to sit down there and get my marks from, okay? So that's what I went by. Just a regular 2x4. That's just a little cutoff I had. But it's the thickness of a 2x4, 2x12, or whatever is the thickness of my tread. Tighten that up. Anyway, I'll do that. In fact, I think I'm good there. I think. We'll have to take a look at that. Got that thing come loose there. Let me screw this back on there. That is one of the downfalls of doing live streams. <laughs> my whole little housing piece came off my router here. Let me tighten it up real good and then I'll get my thing set back. Wouldn't there be a gap between the wall and nosing, just like the floor is supposed to be away from the wall? Or are you just doing No, this? sir, because we always full spread our vinyl plank on the step, so they are completely glued down, okay? Never, ever want to loose lay vinyl plank on a step as you do the wall, as you do the floor. I'm going to take a look at this. It might be good enough to do it anyway, just to get my point across. I don't think I need to recut this or anything. A lot of people actually ask that about the uh, size of the gap on the steps or why don't you have to or anything like that. And that's the answer. You don't, you don't have to... Uh, have expansion if it's going to be glued down. Expansion is only if it's going to be floating like on a floor. You definitely need it then. Why well, do I got this thing off on right now? There we go. Goodness gracious. really fast. I don't want to take up a whole bunch of you guys' time. Okay. Okay. I'm going to make this cut again right here. much I missed just right here it got a little squiggly whenever it came through there so this is cut and ready for my so the point of that is now this been folded over it should fit perfectly right there by the time I close this up because I went on the side and on the side of my mark there okay so we're gonna fold this over and see how it fits it might seem like a big, a lot to do here and everything like that. Once you get your stuff set up and stuff, it really ain't that bad. I've done, I've done all these yesterday pretty fast. Don't take too long. And I made this little jig here a half inch apart. It's going to be wide enough for all your plank and stuff like that. And I put me a little bottom on it so that my planks and stuff will set down in there like that nicely. Give me something to work with. Now I'm gonna take and heat these up. This is the part that you gotta be fairly uh, particular and slow on because you don't wanna you don't wanna do it too fast and stretch out your pattern or break it or anything like that, okay? You get this stuff nice and warm and it's gonna work really, really nicely for you. You can get it a nice little bend. 
without causing any issues whatsoever. When I get it warm, I'm actually going to turn it over, put the whole length of this, the whole width of this step in my vise here so that it turns and gets a nice even fold rather than bending here and then it not bending right there. So it'll have even amount of pressure on the complete step, on the complete width length of this piece as I'm doing it. Let's see, it should start to fall over there by itself here in just a second. Definitely don't want to rush it. I'm just easily putting a little pressure on it right there. You can definitely stretch the pattern and cause a white mark on it where the vinyl will stretch and it'll cause it to be white looking. You don't want that. So just take your time on this part right here. Or else you can go too much with it and actually cause it to break right open right where it's trying to bend. So just let the heat do the work, okay? You do that, you're going to be all good. See, it's falling down there by itself now. It's getting nice and warm. That's what you want. Just the weight of the plank is doing that. Once it gets to that point, it's all good. I'm actually going to take it out, put some super glue in it. And that's going to hold it while we get started. I'm going to hold it while we get started on our other piece, okay? This stuff right here is awesome. I use this on vinyl plank all the time. You can get it at Walmart or anywhere like that. Uh, it's some of the best. It gives you a little bit of working time. You're not so rushed with it or anything like that. Some of it dries really fast. I think that gives you 10 seconds to work, 10 seconds of working time before it actually sticks. It's the last thing you want to do when you've got a tough piece to get in or something like that, where you shave the tongue off or the groove off of it and stick your super glue on it, and then you get it, you can't even get it in position because your glue's already set up. So 10 seconds of working time is perfect. Just put me a little bead right down in there. And I'm going to hold it. Oops, I better heat that up a little bit more. So it will burn your eyes, okay? So don't be leaning over that. Do not lean over the vinyl plank as the super glue is on there with the hot because it will burn your eyes. Just like that. <laughs> I got a little got a little taste of it myself. <laughs> I'm just gonna hold that for just a second till that super glue gets a hold, then I'll start working on the other piece. So if I was doing something like going around the riser or something like that, look over there at the riser piece again. If I was going around the riser just like that, I would be done, that's all I have to do. And it's only gonna be five inches instead of 10 inches or 12 inches like I got here. I actually got, I think this is a foot long piece is what I got here. So, it would already be done and over with. All right. I should have got a little more glue on this end right there, but I didn't. Anyway, like I said, it will hold itself once it gets going there. Once it dry, I mean, once it gets cool in that position. Hope this ain't boring you guys to get boring you guys to death. 
there is an actual company that will do this for you, but I haven't checked the I have not checked the prices of them. So this is a thing. Like I said, if you send that company some of your plank, they can do this for you, or else you could do it yourself and just take that charge and pass it right to the customer and make you some extra bucks on the job. Or again, doing this to save yourself from building out the step or cutting off the tongue, cutting off the bull nose. Either way, I don't know if you, you might not think, well, this is too slow for building out. Well, is it too slow and cost efficient? Because this will cost you probably a hundred bucks or so for material to build your steps out on an average set of steps with 13, 13 or 15 steps. It's going to cost you about a hundred bucks for material. I've done it several times. So this is why I like to super glue it because this already takes a minute and I'm not a very patient guy. I want to be done and move on to the next one. sure I get it all the way to the end this time. I didn't do that a while ago and it kept trying to open up on me before it got dry. So uh, I got it to the end this time. Ta-ta. And there we go with that. I'll just hold this for a second like I did a while ago. Ten seconds to be exact. And this is going to be good. This is going to be a complete stair nosing. All made. So a router and your half inch B cut, half inch B Groover, and the vinyl plank and heat gun is a, honestly all you need. You could just take a couple boards and some vices there and squeeze it together. You don't have to actually make a jig like that. I'm burning my eyes again with that hot super glue. I'm gonna set this right here on this D cut. It's got an aluminum, aluminum top and fence on it so that's going to cool that off a little faster than just setting and holding that. <clears throat> that should fit nicely. It actually looks like it might be just a tad, looking at my mark there and there, it looks like it might be just a tad wide but we'll check it out here. Let me get this thing turned around so you can see it. So this is going to be the same. This is going to be the same thickness as your tread because it is a two by four and it's going to be the same as a two by 12. I got, I got just a barely little slide. Could you use there. the router table with the fence to do the groove? Uh, well, I used my board here. I just kind of marked it on my piece where to clamp my board down to. You can see my mark here and here. I just clamp the board to that and I run my router right against my board like so. That way I was getting the nice straight square line. So I did do that. Router table would be great. I don't have one though. So uh, just made it to do like so. And this is your bullnose step. And once again, you can take 
and lock the rest of your tread piece right in and have a nice seamless installation there really nice fit on everything you don't have any no overlap no anything like that so it works out perfect you have your same factory micro beveled edge right there it just keeps everything beautiful whenever you can keep your locking mechanism and work right on your step like that i just love that myself i love the fact that you can lock your pieces right in and also like i was talking about a while ago with the waterfall with the waterfall piece you can lock in here and you can lock in down your riser so that's just super nice man you're going to get a super clean finished look on all of that stuff i mean look at that let's go set this stuff on the steps and we'll take a look at it okay see what it looks like there so this is again a little bit skinny for is a little bit skinny I mean fat these because obviously this is uh, not a 2 by 12 but you can get an idea of what it'll look like right there and well that ain't gonna fit now because I got it down too low but anyway I'll get up let my guy get over here with the camera so you can see the front of that I'm gonna turn it around a little bit more for you So that's a really nice looking step right there. Even with the waterfall method, it's gonna be super nice. I wanna take and uh, let's see what I got here. Okay, I'm gonna take and do something really fast here. <clears throat> I'm gonna show you guys what the waterfall will actually look like if if it was to be carried on right around and down about the right length of that. And then I need the back part, so I'm gonna cut it a little bit short, so oof, stuff on that. Just to give you guys an idea of what it's gonna look like, okay? <sighs> Peter Blue said those look great. Thank you, sir. So that's going to be your waterfall method right there. Nice and nice, okay? So that's going to be super. Let me get this out of the way. Thanks. I just think that's a super clean finish right there. Being able to lock in both sides of that waterfall is really nice way to go. You don't have anything overlapping or anything like that. It's really, really nice way to go. And the same thing with this, you know, look, you can do your in outside corners, lock your piece in. Imagine this, looky right here. So imagine this carrying on down. You could actually lock your piece in here and lock your piece in right there and carry on with the same exact uh locking everything in so it just it's super nice it's it's the way to go honestly it's really nice now will i be doing this on my everyday installs absolutely not when i run into situations where customers not liking the uh manufacturer stair nosing they don't want to wait to order some stair rods this is going to be perfect okay Stair rods are my go-to if, uh, if I'm able to use them and the customer is up for that. I um, absolutely love the stair rods, which are these guys right here on this. You guys know all about these. You only use the skin of the vinyl plank. I've actually done videos of these, and they make a beautiful set of steps. But, like I said, certain situations, this is going to be just a beautiful clean finish way to go okay do you think it would work on thinner plank yeah i'm almost positive it would i've done it with this right here because it's a thicker plank so that's why i've done it 
I think it'll be easier on a thinner plank myself. So that was the specific reason for doing it on a thicker plank. Um, if you guys want to hold on for just a second, I'll actually router one and do it real quick. I've got a thin piece right here. Uh, I don't have to do any particular marks or anything like that. Just to show you that it will do. So let me cut this down. And we'll do this. I'll just get this done. Like I said, it ain't got to be perfect or anything like that. It's just for the fact of showing that it will do it on a thinner plank. I haven't, honestly, I haven't tested it, but... Like I said, I figured it would be easier on this than it would a thicker plank, so that's why I chose to use a thicker plank. I've got tons of scraps back there, but I wanted to do it on the thicker for the sake of it being more likely not to do it. Uh, just have to adjust the depth of this again, not to cut all the way through. Main thing is just not cutting all the way through. Actually, let me go just a touch deeper on that. Okay, that's it. All right, this shouldn't take long since it is a thinner piece. Just that. I was hearing it get weak there. Cut this off just a little bit because my router died right before it got to the end there, so I don't want that. I don't want that part on there. This is going to bend really easy. It was so clean because my router is about dead on my battery. I bought it, brought another battery in a while ago, and I didn't even put it in there. So this is a super thin plank here. I don't exactly know what what type it is. It's one of the solid vinyls though, instead of a WPC. Look at that. So that's working really fast since it's a thinner product. Get this real good and warm, then I'm gonna drop some super glue in it just like I did a while ago, okay? This stuff is amazing. I absolutely love this Gorilla Glue. Better heat that up a little bit more. I don't want to say, yeah, it works, and then break it trying it. <laughs> I'm going to 
gonna stick it over here on this aluminum table like I did a while ago just to cool it off faster. This also gives me something square to put it against so that it will cool and stick at the right squareness because it's a wall here and then a flat wall right there so gives it something good to good and square to cool off on. Scoot it down to another cool spot. There we go, same thing. Oops, trying to open up on me a little bit there. I didn't let it cool all the way. Let me let that sit. Let me let that sit for just another minute there. I want you guys to be able to see that it does work. Everybody is getting ready to, uh, for fat day. I hope you guys are excited about that. I've been on a, myself, I have been on an all plant-based diets since September 16th. We had a Thanksgiving dinner at church today and I kind of spoiled myself a little bit. I had turkey and all that good stuff. All right. There it is right there. In case you guys, well, you guys did want to know because you asked about it. And there it is. I don't have, I don't think I do, any more of this in here to connect to it. But as you can see, I've got my lip here, my connection, my locking mechanism right there, and my other locking mechanism right there. So I could join on this piece just as I did my other piece. There you go. Nice. Works out good. Like I said, I thought that would be easier than the other thicker stuff, so that's why I did the thicker stuff first. Anyway, I don't know how long I've been on here, but I hope that will help someone. Uh, I'm going to take a look at the screen here, see if there's any questions or anything like that. Uh, anybody got any questions or anything, I'll be happy to answer anything that you want if i can that is got 22 people on here 10 thumbs up could i get oh been on almost an hour we've got 23 people still watching could we get uh 13 more thumbs up for those of you watching who have not give thumbs up uh the thumbs up the questions comments and all that kind of stuff help promote the video so i would appreciate anytime you guys watch hit that thumbs up button Ask a question if you have something. Give feedback to other people. We're all a community here, so we always want to help one another out. It's not just me sharing what I know. I'm also learning from you guys. So feedback either way, question-wise, or just giving your advice on something, recommendations, or anything like that is always appreciated, okay? Uh, I don't see anything coming in. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. Until next time, FBSB's out.